Hi there. I'm going to do the third one of these. A uh, few things that I wanted to say. And uh, I'm going to talk about Rosetta Stone. And I'm going to talk about the uh, structuralists and the, I would call it, the people who want to hear the tune first. And I'll explain why I put it in those terms. Uh, I think in terms of language learning, uh, there are two positions that I see. One is the position that we need to learn the structure first, otherwise we will be reinforcing uh, a poor grasp of the structure. And in that camp we have the people who want to teach grammar, who want to force you to get the grammar right, who want to do grammar tests, who want you to understand explanations, or even the learners who feel that they have to have a grasp of the grammar before they can learn a language. And also in that category are Rosetta Stone, and I'll explain why. Even though Rosetta Stone claims to be a departure from traditional language learning, in fact, they are very much structuralists. And uh, in fact, that was confirmed to me this morning in the discussion that I had with their uh, director of learning. So that's the structuralists. First, you learn the structure. Uh, the other position, which is the position of a Stephen Krashen, which is my position, which is that you need words, you need a familiarity with the language, but this is best acquired through a lot of listening, especially listening and reading, which Krashen pushes. And in doing this, you start to get a feel for the language. And at various times in that process of acquiring the language and acquiring words, you can occasionally review the structure and that the structure will gradually become clearer to you, mostly because you've been exposed to it to a great deal, but to some extent because of these additional explanations or corrections or other kind of teacher input. So the first group, the structuralists, are very much teacher-centered and this other approach, which is my approach, the Krashen approach, is more learner discovering the language. Most people are much more familiar with the first approach. And that's why many people come to Link and they don't understand what we're doing. Uh, however, I am quite convinced that the most successful language learners, famous polyglots, or countries like Sweden where people watch TV in English, that the successful language learners have overwhelmingly been people who take the approach of getting the language in, getting familiar with it, acquiring words through experience, letting the brain get used to it with a minimal, a minimal amount of specific instruction. Now, this morning, as I mentioned in my previous video, I sat in on an e-conference and I had the opportunity to listen to Dwayne Sider S-I-D-E-R, who's the head of learning at Rosetta Stone. And his presentation was not so much about Rosetta Stone, but rather about, uh, it was a very general discussion about what he considered to be the new role of the teacher, which is that of a sheepdog, as he put it, as a coordinator, and that the teacher has to learn from the students. And of course, this is what everyone is saying today. It's so commonplace, it's become a trite cliche, but very few people actually walk the talk and so I commented that I have been through Rosetta Stone and Rosetta Stone in fact imposes very specific contexts here is a boy drinking a juice here is a girl drinking tea what are they doing you got you know you say it or you have a choice of multiple choice to get it right or you you speak very early on in your study of the language you try to say it uh, and even in the more advanced version, they have a very specific uh, scenario and you're supposed to respond to the scenario and you're supposed to speak. And I commented to Mr. Sider, I said, you know, what I found very limiting is that, that Rosetta Stone imposes, through very nice videos, imposes a context. I may not be interested. There was a picture of some people doing some painting and the ladders falling, falling over. I'm not interested in people painting and a ladder falling over. I'm interested in hearing about things that interest me. And I want to choose what I want to listen to. 
and I want to go on and on and on, acquiring more of the language as I learn about things that are of interest to me. And I don't want to have to speak in lesson one or lesson two or lesson three. I want to speak when I'm ready. I want the choice. I want to discover the language on my own. So, you know, there are those, and I had a discussion coming back from the the language teachers conference with a teacher, uh, someone who had studied English, he was of Chinese origin, and uh, she said that uh, she had to have grammar. If you didn't have the grammar, you just continue making the mistakes. I believe that that's not true because you don't need to use the language initially. All you need to do is get it in you by listening and reading. You can't make a mistake if you're only listening and reading. You're not required to produce the language. So that, those are the two positions, the structuralists and the, the naturalists, I call it. And the naturalists, to my mind, are more like my wife learning to play the piano. Only now, after three, four, five years of enjoying playing music, reading music, enjoying, gradually getting better, now she's starting to be interested in the chords and, and the relationship between the notes and call it theory. But if you had tried to present that to her at the beginning, she would have probably stopped playing piano. And, and part of the whole thing about instruction is that it's, it's a nice feeling that you know something that the student doesn't know so you can explain it to them. Uh, but it's a bit like getting ins you know, instructions on, on where to go. If you, if you say, well, I'm looking for such and such a theater, and a person says, well, you go down to the church, you turn left, you'll see a schoolyard, you go three streets past the schoolyard, and you'll see that there's a park, and then there's two big trees, and you go down there. And the person who's giving you these instructions is very pleased because they know exactly where the schoolyard is, where the church is, where the two trees are, whatever, and they're able to give you this knowledge. But you've never been down that road. You haven't a clue what they're talking about. As soon as they finish explaining where the schoolyard and the tree and the church and the trees are, you've forgotten. It meant nothing to you. But if you have walked down or driven down that road three or four times, then those explanations start to make sense. And that's exactly what I feel with language learning. In theory, it would be nice if you could get all the structure explained to you, uh, and then you could go ahead and, and you would be able to understand so much better. The fact is, though, in my own experience, and I may be exceptional, but I find that I cannot understand the explanations until I have had enough exposure. And I'm quite comfortable reading and listening and not understanding everything. I am confident in the knowledge that I am gradually getting used to the language. And that at some point, these explanations that I read every couple of months and still don't understand, at some point they're going to click in. And what's more, not only will I understand them, but at some point I'll naturally start to use them correctly because it will seem natural to me to say it this way rather than that way. So that's a quick take on the structuralist, which is the grammar teachers and Rosetta Stone and the naturalists. And I feel the advantage with the naturalists is the way we learn at Link, and the way I like to learn is that the course never ends. You just continue to grow in the language, following your interests and doing things that are interesting, putting in the time. And in fact, this gets me to one of the statements I heard at the conference in San Diego, which I totally agree with, and that is language learning boils down to motivation, time on task, and attentiveness. And so if you're motivated to learn, if you have interesting things to listen to, you're going to put in the time, you're going to be motivated, and a little bit of flashcard review, a little bit of grammar instruction, a little bit of this and that, every now and then, correction, it all helps to make you attentive. A lot of the functions we have at link, the highlighting of different words, it helps to make you attentive. So slowly, you start to notice things better and better. But that's still sort of a more natural way to learn, one that I find more effective and ultimately faster. So that's the last of my three videos this evening, and now I'm going to go and read a book. Thank you for listening.